Hello everyone, we're going to check out some new LoRa models that enhance Quen Image Edit 2511 so we can get even better results compared to using just the base model. There are two LoRas that I really want to try out today. The first one is a LoRa called AnyPose. This one's designed to improve character pose transfer from reference images into your edited image. And honestly, the diagram explains it perfectly. You've got your input image and your pose reference image. So in your Quen Image Edit workflow, you'll feed in two reference images along with your prompt, enable the LoRa, and you get an output where the character from your input image matches the exact pose from your reference. This really helps boost performance when you're relying on Quen Image Edit, especially with the 2511 version, which sometimes struggles with open pose transfer. Now, as the author already mentioned, Quen Image Edit does support control net features like open pose, depth maps, and line art, but even then, the pose accuracy can still be a little off sometimes. That's where this LoRa steps in. It seriously enhances pose accuracy, as you can see from the examples. That said, it's still got some limitations. Remember, it's just a LoRa. It can't do everything on its own, but that's the beauty of open source AI development. Things are only going to keep getting better. Now, the next LoRa we're checking out is super interesting. Lately, I've been kind of bored with always generating realistic styles. I've been leaning more toward anime styles, and this LoRa makes it super easy to transform your reference image into that look. As you can see from the examples, the author trained this LoRa to work with both the older Quen Image Edit 2509 version and the current 2511 version. It even works with the distilled four-step LoRa setup. Here's the thing, without a specialized LoRa, when you try switching from a realistic image to an anime style in Quen Image Edit, the results can feel a bit off. But with this LoRa, you actually retain a ton of the original details, like the shape of the glasses, the earrings, even the lips. All those little elements carry over into the anime style output, and it just looks way more refined. It's super helpful for anime, cartoons, and even certain 3D video styles. But since it's specifically designed for anime, we'll stick with flat, cell-shaded anime results for today's demo. All right, let's jump into Comfy UI. I've got a super simple, basic workflow set up for Quen Image Edit. Honestly, that's all you really need most of the time. By default, it uses three image inputs, so that's exactly what we've got here. I've set it up to support different input methods, like loading an image directly, pulling from a URL, or reading from a folder path. You can use whichever works best for you. Sometimes, if I'm testing something quick, I just drag and drop the image into the loader node. Other times, if I'm pulling inspiration from Pinterest or another site, I'll skip downloading and just paste the image URL straight in. Super flexible. The settings here are pretty self-explanatory. You can enable or disable whichever reference image you want, and adjusting width and height is super easy too. But today, we're really just zooming in on the LoRa models, so up top, I've connected three LoRa loader nodes. For any pose, there's actually a helper model and a base model, both available in the AnyPose repository under the Files section. I tried running it with just the base model at first, but the results weren't super accurate. Once I enabled both models together, though, it got way closer to what's shown in the hugging face examples. So yeah, definitely use both. For now, I've bypassed the anime style LoRa because we're testing AnyPose first. Let's look at a simple example. I've got input image 1, a character standing next to a motorcycle, and input image 2, a reference pose where another character is doing yoga. The goal? Transfer that yoga pose onto the motorcycle character. And here's the result. The pose transfer is actually pretty accurate. Now there are some small adjustments because of the environment. The feet, for instance, are kind of stepping on the motorcycle behind her instead of floating in midair like the original yoga pose. So yeah, it's still a bit hit or miss sometimes, but it's a diffusion model. There's always going to be a little variation. My prompt was super simple. Change character in image one to match the pose from image two. That's really all it takes to trigger the any pose Laura. And from there, it automatically tries to preserve other elements too, like the background, the motorcycle, and even small character details. Those are all bonus features you can lean into if you want but the core function is pose transfer. I think this LoRa is actually pretty practical for real-world editing scenarios, especially when you're trying to remix or repose characters in Quen Image Edit. Next up, let's try a slightly more complex example. 
Here I'm transferring not just the pose, but also the background environment from the reference image. So I've got an AI-generated character in a weird non-standard standing pose, and I'm dropping her into a completely new scene while keeping that pose intact. The result? The character pose matches and the background gets blended in too. But one thing to note, this Laura only handles character poses. It doesn't bring over objects from the reference image unless you specifically ask for them in your prompt. So if you want to keep certain props or background elements, you'll need to mention them explicitly. Totally doable. It just depends on how you write your prompt. In this comfy UI example, you can see it working. The character pose and background are both transferred. That said, you might notice some blurriness, especially around the eyes. And that's totally normal. Quen Image Edit isn't meant to produce hyper detailed results like Z Image Turbo or Quen Image might. If you've got your own character Loris trained, those will look sharper. But out of the box, it's more about macro edits than fine details. If you do want more clarity, you can bump up the sampling steps a bit, or better yet, run the output through a refinement workflow using another image generation model. I'll show you that in a second. Here's another test. I've got two characters. One is making a very specific hand sign, and I want to transfer that exact pose to the other character. So reference image one is our base character, and reference image two provides the hand pose. The result? The pose transfers, but again, the eyes and hands look a bit soft and blurry. That's mostly because I kept the sampling steps low. Remember, Quen Image Edit is designed for quick, lightweight edits, not full image enhancement. So next, I ran the same output through a refinement step using the image model. This really helps sharpen details, especially facial features. The hands still aren't perfect, diffusion models and hands, am I right? But it's definitely an improvement. Honestly, it's still a bit of a hit or miss but you can always refine further in a separate workflow. Alternatively, you can crank up the denoise value. I tried bumping it to 0.45, and you can see the hands and face get noticeably more textured, less cartoonish, more defined. If you're going for realism, running your output through Image Turbo is a solid move. If you prefer anime or other stylized looks, just pick a matching refinement model. Now, what if I want to take that same pose transfer? but switch to an anime style instead of realism. That's where our second Laura comes in. The Quen Image Edit 2511 Anime Laura. This one uses trigger words like anime style or flat cell shading to activate the transformation. And good news, it's compatible with both the 2509 and 2511 versions of Quen Image Edit. I've already imported it into my Laura folder, so I just need to unbypass the Laura loader node and add the trigger keyword to the front of my prompt. And just like that, my realistic image gets converted into a clean anime style. Take a look. Now it's fully stylized. I've been having a lot of fun playing around with anime looks lately. It's a nice change of pace. Of course, if you need even more detail, you can always feed this result into another image generation model for refinement. You can enhance everything, the textures, the lines, the shading, whatever you need. And this approach isn't limited to anime either. You could experiment with other styles too, but anime is just the example we're focusing on today. Oh, and if you want to upscale the final result, go for it. Some people like using external upscalers or post-processing tools. That's totally up to you. So yeah, that's a quick warm-up for this week. And coming up next, we're going to check out LTX2. It literally just dropped today. Right now, I'm downloading the model and trying to get it running locally, so we'll dive deep into that in the next video. I'll see you then. Have a great day and catch you soon.